Art Club. Today our featured artist is Spanish painter and sculptor Pablo Picasso. We're going to read this book, If Picasso Painted a Snowman, by Amy and Greg Newbold. If someone asked you to paint the snowman, you would probably start with three white circles, stacked one upon another. Then you would add black dots for eyes, an orange triangle for a nose, and a black dotted smile. But if Pablo Picasso painted a snowman, it would look like this. Not all artists paint the same. Can you find J.M.W. Turner's snowman? Lost in the blizzard? I think I see it right there. Blam! Roy Lichtenstein's snow hero saves the day. Georgia O'Keeffe's snowman wouldn't bloom long in the desert. A patchwork quilt, soft and cozy, wraps up Gustav Klimt's snow family. How many snowmen hide in Claude Monet's haystacks? A dust-colored snowman watches Pablita Velarde's ornamental birds. Jackson Pollock painted his snowman, splish, splash, splat. In Salvador Dali's winter fantasy, snowmen drip like melty cheese. Rickety rack, a stick snowman drives Paul Klee's wire car. Mark Chagall's snowman cavort in a bright circus ring. Dot upon dot upon dot. Here's a snowman by George Surratt. Piet Mondrian's snowman is square. Do you see a carrot anywhere there? I think I see one right there. Circles surround circles as Sonia Delaunay's snowman spins. The rhythms of the street make Jacob Lawrence's snowman smile. Vincent Van Gogh's snowman swirls and curls in the wavy hills, and Grant Wood's famous snowman gothic will never melt away. What would your snowman look like? The end, and that's If Picasso Painted a Snowman. If you enjoyed the book we just read, the library has some other great books about Pablo Picasso. We have this great story, Paris in the Spring with Picasso by Joan Yolick. We also have this great storybook, Picasso and Benu, by P.I. Maltby. There are also lots of biographies about Pablo Picasso in our biography section, so come check them out. Now let's get started with our project. You should have a Ziploc with air dry clay in it. Air dry clay is basically clay that you can mold and you just leave it out to dry. You should also have little containers in your art kit with various colors of paint. You should have paintbrushes and pipe cleaners. Things you need from home are a little cup of water for your paintbrushes. When you change colors, make sure you dip your paintbrush in the water so all of the previous color can come off of the paintbrush. I taped a piece of wax paper to my table 
That way when I mold the clay, it won't leave remnants of it on the table. When you take your air dry clay out of the bag, it's gonna feel pretty firm. But when you start molding it, it'll warm up and be much easier to mold. So just take your clay and start mushing it in your hands. That's going to warm it up and make it much easier to mold. You can just squeeze it in your hands like this, or you can place it down on the table and press it down. Or you can do both. Try to mold the clay into the shape of a ball. You can even roll it if you like. Just try to get these wrinkles and lines out of the clay. Try to make it a smooth surface. The, so as you can see, I'm just pressing the clay down onto the table and it's becoming smoother. Once the surface of the clay becomes a little bit smoother, you'll want to start molding the clay into the shape of a face. You can make the face any shape you like. You can make it round, you can make it long, oval, you can make it square. The whole point is to be creative. You should set aside a small piece of this clay. We're gonna use it to roll out some trim for our face. Once you've created the shape of the face, just smooth out the edges a little bit. Try to flatten out the edges, make it a little smoother. And again, just try to smooth out the lines on the clay. Next, I'm going to take my small piece of clay and start rolling out some trim to put on the face. I'm going to take a small piece and just roll it in my hands. We're basically trying to make a spaghetti. So you can roll it in your hands. So as you roll, the piece of clay becomes thinner you can also roll it on the table. Just take your piece of clay and start rolling it with your fingers and just sort of spread it out with your fingers while you're rolling. Here's the clay that I rolled out it's nice and thin and smooth. Now I'm going to take the rolled out piece of clay and create a profile in the middle of the face. I'm going to start here at the bottom. Just press it lightly onto the face. By profile, I mean we're going to make something that looks like the profile of a person's face the lips, the nose, and the forehead. Here's the shape of the mouth. So here's the profile. We have the chin, the mouth, the nose, and the forehead. For my next step, I'm going to start painting the face. You can get creative and paint whatever colors you like in any pattern you like. I'm going to start with yellow and I'm going to paint one quarter of the face yellow. You don't need to wait for the clay to dry to start painting it.
Don't forget to paint your edges. Hmm. Next, I'm going to paint this part of the face purple. Now I'm going to paint this part of the face blue. Going to paint. Next, I'm going to paint this part of the face green. Painting. I'm going to use a straw to make holes on the top of the face. All I'm doing is pressing the straw into the clay and twisting it slightly. And it just pulls out a piece of clay. But we're making these holes so we can insert the pipe cleaners into the clay once it dries. And that'll be hair. You can turn the straw over as well and use the other side. So now we have our six holes. We're gonna use that to put in pipe cleaners and make hair. Now I'm just going to decorate the face. Going to make some polka dots on this part. I'm going to make a swirl over here. And I'm going to make some stripes on this part. Now, I'm going to take the rest of the rolled clay and I'm going to shape two eyes. Take about half of this, roll it out a little bit more. Once you've rolled it nice and thin, just take the clay and shape it into an eye. You can place it any way you like on the face. You can place it like this or sideways, upside down, however you like. I put mine in sideways. Now I'm going to take another piece 
and roll out another eye. Here's the rolled out piece of clay. Now I'm just making the shape of an eye. This one I'll do a little bit lopsided. I'm going to take what's left of the clay and roll it into a ball. And that's going to be the eyeball. So I'm going to place this right in the center of the eye. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other eye. Just make a little circle and place it in the center of the eye. Just like that. Now we're going to paint our trim. I'm going to paint this part red. I'm going to paint the eyeballs green. And I'm going to paint the eyes blue. The paint will dry much faster than the clay, but let your project sit overnight so the clay can become fully hardened. In the meantime, I made another one so I can demonstrate how to put the hair on the face. You should have 12 pipe cleaners in your art kit. Take two pipe cleaners, any colors you like, and just twist them together. So keep twisting until you reach the top of the pipe cleaners. And they're going to make one pipe cleaner that's striped like this. So there's my first striped pipe cleaner. I made all of these color combinations. Now all you need is a pen or a pencil so you can shape the pipe cleaner around it and make curly, crazy hair. Take your first pipe cleaner and push it through the hole and twist it. Next, I'm going to take another pipe cleaner, push it through the hole, and twist it right at the base. You can leave the hair straight like this if you like but I'm going to show you how to twirl it using a pencil. I attached all the pipe cleaners. So now to make the hair curly, I'm going to take a pencil and twist the pipe cleaners around the pencil. All you need to do is shape the pipe cleaner around the pencil and just pull it out. And now you have a curly piece of hair. Do the same thing with each pipe cleaner. Just twist it around the pencil
and pull out the pencil. And you have a curly piece of hair. There it is, our Picasso-inspired face. Pablo Picasso was born on October 25th, 1881, on the Mediterranean coast of Spain. Primarily a painter, he also became a fine sculptor, engraver, and ceramist. His father, an art teacher, recognized his son's genius early. Picasso studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Barcelona, where his father was a professor. Pablo was so talented, however, that he had his own art studio in Barcelona by the age of 16. In 1904, Picasso began living in Paris. His personal style began to form in the years from 1901 to 1904, a period often referred to as his blue period because of the blue tones he used in his paintings at that time. The period between 1905 and 1907, when he started becoming more successful, is said to belong to his rose period. In 1907, Picasso went in an entirely different direction he became fascinated with primitive art and carvings, especially those of African origin. This was a major turning point in art because it opened the door to cubism and later the abstract art movement. Picasso's work was ever-changing. His classic period was from 1918 until 1925. At the same time, he was working on designs for the ballet and also continued to develop the cubist art technique. Throughout his life, Picasso continued to work with incredible speed and versatility as a painter, a ceramist, a sculptor, a designer, and graphic artist into his 90s. The value of his estate was estimated at more than $500 million when he died on April 8, 1973, in France.